it is Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, which means a midweek, mid-difficulty themed crossword. I'm I'm not extremely pressed for time today, but I, I do have a slight bit of time pressure, so it won't be like Monday where I really rush through the puzzle, but we'll see if I can solve this in eh, a reasonable, slightly, maybe slightly abbreviated amount of time. And this slightly, uh, slightly quick edition of the Daily Solve potentially has been brought to you by Noah Byzantz and Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, and as always, the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They're benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. That means they directly support this channel. They bring us this series. For that, I'm very grateful. Thank you to those four and to everybody who supports the channel via Patreon. It really does keep this whole thing going. If you'd like to help keep this going, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link to find all of the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as for benefactors, that official Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. Uh, what else? There's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server you can join to be uh, a member of a very friendly chat community discussing uh, these crosswords, other crosswords, other puzzles, these videos, and so on. And there's a link in the description field to that. Finally, it is a big help if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube, like the videos, comment on them. Um, all of that uh, interaction is helpful. All right, now let's get on to the crossword. This is a Wednesday-themed puzzle by John Clark Levin, who I think has constructed around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start solving and see what we're up to today. Some water bearers. I mean, my first thought is tanks. I don't, you know, as in sort of water tanks, but I don't have, I feel there are probably quite a few possibilities here. Uh, MASH co-star Alan, Alan Alda was co-star of, of MASH, the, uh, in this case, the TV show. So there we go. Let's look at the downs. Yearly record, uh, annals. So the annals of history, the, you know, the yearly records and annal, of course, shares uh, is is a closely related word to annum, for instance, year, so or annual, for that matter. Jousting weapon uh, is a lance. A knight might use a lance in a joust. And Italian poet who wrote, nature is the art of God. I mean, Italian poet, five letters starting with D. I have to assume it's Dante. It's funny that we have three N's in a row. Look at that in a moment. But first, this looks like naan. Yes, it is. Tandoori chicken accompaniment. So there we go. Indian bread, naan. And then Ann Taylor, this is a clothing uh, retail, U.S. clothing retailer, I'm about 90% sure. So what is this? First American to orbit the Earth. Uh, was it John Glenn? What's going on with this? <laughs> Sorry, not quite sure what's going on. Is this going to be another end? Fish with snowflake and sawtooth varieties. I'm not sure offhand. Flinch, say. To flinch is to react. And here we have Selma March Leader who served 17 terms in Congress. Oh, um, uh, oh, this is infuriating. I do know who this is. Who? The, what is his name? Uh, John Lewis. Are they all Johns? John Glenn, John Lewis? Do I put an L here? Oh, do we double each letter? Oh, that would explain why. Because I was trying to think about this. I was think I was trying to think putting in John Glenn, and you know I was thinking. But even with with the number of spaces left, there's still the ends still cover too much of it. And then I was thinking, is it Glenn like that maybe? But Nell doesn't look like anything. So then when I saw this. L E. It makes me think W I S. John Lewis. I don't quite understand why we're doing this, but I think this might be the the thing that all of the people being referenced in the theme clues are John. Their first their given name is John, and we spell their surname doubled up. So, no, sorry, I already spelled Lewis. This is Glenn. Yeah, and <laughs> it's a funny one to choose as the first one because. The ends doubled I mean we just have this ridiculous run of ends that did make me think this was going to be even more preposterous than it turned out to be. I don't really understand why this is the case, uh, but but I think this is probably the answer. 
oracle. An oracle is a seer, someone who predicts things. This is a funny case where this might have helped me solve the puzzle more quickly now that I see it because I got, you know, extra letters sort of for free. Goose egg, uh, goose egg is a score of zero or nil. Uh, bootleg, e.g., to bootleg is to what? To counterfeit, to smuggle, to... I'm not sure what it is that goes in here. Largest country in Africa. Oh, what is the what is the largest country in Africa? How do I not instantly know this? That's very annoying. I feel silly for not knowing that. Okay. Refrigerator decorations are are they things you put on the refrigerator? Ma fr magnets, fridge magnets. Yes. Yes, indeed. There are some on my refrigerator as we speak. Some water bear. Oh, oh, water mains. Okay. Uh, in this case, pipes. That That's much better than what I said, which was tanks or something similar to that. Um, they hold water, tanks, and you could say they bear it. They bear water, but bearing almost has a connotation of sort of taking a thing from one place to another. I'm bearing it from here to there. So the pipes themselves are a better example of that. Anyway, Kate and Blank, 1980s sitcom. Doesn't look familiar to me at all. Kate and Alfie, Kate and Ally, Kate and Aggie, Kate and Andy. I have absolutely no idea. Okay. Oh. Is it Algeria? Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense when I think about it and I try to imagine a map. But yeah, Algeria definitely wasn't popping into my mind earlier. I guess I was thinking of countries that were, I don't know, further south, I suppose. I don't particularly know why I wasn't thinking of North Africa, but uh, it, it wasn't what was coming to mind initially, which is not correct. So there we go. All right. Born, uh, nay. And um, this is from, I assume this is what we're looking for here, from the French for literally born. This is the feminine form of the, of the word. Um, fancy so. Fancy so. It's so true. It's Ever? Is this not Algeria? Fancy so. Hmm. I might have something wrong. I don't know. I can't quite see that. Pageant prize, a tiara. So you win a you know beauty pageant or something and you have a tiara to indicate your winning status. Introductory course, a... The question mark makes me think it's maybe an intro introductory course to a meal or something as opposed to an educational course, um, because the question mark indicates a pun of some sort. Let's see. Bootleg. Oh, illegal. Oh, okay. Well, that was more straightforward than I was making it. So Kate and Ali. Boy, that doesn't, it is not familiar to me at all. Often with this sort of reference, if it's, even if it was something I don't personally know, I've often sort of heard it mentioned. No idea. Absolutely none. Oh, ergo. Okay. There we go. It's not so as an intensifier, meaning uh, so true, very true, or uh, or such. It's so, uh, meaning thus or therefore, ergo. All right, there we go. Unwritten, if something's unwritten, it could be oral, as in an oral tradition, an unwit unwritten uh, tradition or story or something. Un uh, introductory course, a salad. Okay, I suppose you could, have a sal you could have a salad as a first course. There we go. A kerfuffle is an ado. Ado is a very common crossword word, so it's, it's, it's worth just keeping in mind that it shows up pretty frequently. Winter underwear, or what appears four times in, what appear four times in this puzzle? Winter underwear, long john, long johns, <laughs> ah, right, okay. I want to know if anyone jumped straight to that when they saw this and they thought long johns, because that feels doable to me. I certainly didn't, didn't immediately guess it, but it feels possible to have seen these recognized that each one was a John, saw them stretched out and said, ah, Long Johns, that could be the theme. Um, I didn't, but let me know if you did. In the past, if something happened five years in the past, it happened five years ago. CD players could be DJs, so you could literally place CDs during a DJ set, I suppose. Here we have dot, so I think the answer is simply dot, period, full stop. Throws in, if you throw something in, you add it, so adds. One might be made on a birthday. You might make a wish before blowing out the candles on your cake. If something's not learned, it's innate. 
sort of within you. Uh, to have title to something is to own it, like a house, I suppose. Uh, made it, if one made a choice, one opted for a particular route. To contribute is to chip in money to a meal, say. And like some Hmong, uh, Laotian, there we go, like the, um, like the currency, um, well, the unit of currency at in yesterday's uh, connections, uh, which is a subdivision of Laotian currency that I insisted was going to be relevant to the connections solve yesterday. It absolutely was not completely red herring to myself there. Anyway, uh, if you're dressed, you're clad, you're, you're covered in something. And in time we blank that which we often fear. In time we hate that which we often fear. That is incredibly true. Uh, from Shakespeare there. And then the littlest speck would be Iota. I think this is the third time we've seen Iota this week, possibly, or at least in the last week. Um, but there we go. It's a small bit of something. Uh, if one bears witness, one attests to something you've you've seen, and its shores have the lowest land-based elevation on Earth, the Dead Sea. Interesting. Its HQ is sometimes called Crypto City, NSA, um, uh, the National Security Agency. And this is a case where uh, the word crypto has sort of been polluted by, <laughs> by cryptocurrency, even though it was a long-standing uh, uh, sort of familiar term for cryptography. And I think Quite a lot of people in that field have been very irritated. <laughs> That's all of their sort of social media discussion and everything has been uh, infected by, and conferences and things like this uh, overlap with this much newer concept. Anyway, damage, so to speak, could be loss, maybe? Loss and damage? Uh, thought is certainly right. Uh, damage. Time to look at the keyboard. Um... Hmm. Sorry, I would just move on, but it's just, oh, cost, cost. What's the damage? What's the cost? There we go. You could ask that when paying for something. Okay, sports organization with more than a thousand members. Oh, okay, the NCAA, the uh, National Collegiate, National Collegiate Athletics Ad Association or Administration Association, maybe? Uh, I would think it would have many more than a thousand. Oh no, each member is a school. I see. I was thinking each member was the was an athlete, which would, would be you know many thousands. But uh, no, it's each university. I think is a member probably. So that makes sense. Okay, gracias response de nada. So thank you, and it's nothing. No, no problem in Spanish. 2019 Brad Pitt sci-fi movie whose title means to the stars ad astra, which I meant to see and I never got around to. Uh, pagan is what? Pagan. Hmm. I don't know. What are we looking for that has an E there? It'll be obvious when I see it, but I can't think. Eureka. Aha. Oh, heretic, maybe? Could you, Would you describe, would you use pagan and heretic synonymously? I wouldn't have thought so. But I guess from the perspective, perspective of a believer of one religion... A pagan would be a heretic. So maybe that maybe that is right. Maybe. What about this? No, it is not right. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, because I was looking at the TT and I was thinking, could be T-top? But no, it isn't. Norse god portrayed in film by Chris Hemsworth as Thor. That's certainly true. Um, who you could describe as being part of the pantheon of a paganistic religion, arguably. Uh, so what is this? Oh, heathen, maybe? There we go. Okay, so... Right. So same idea. Someone from a particular religious tradition could see a pagan as being a heathen from their perspective. Okay. So bridal strap is a rein, is it not a horse? Oops. Logical operators that output true only if both inputs are true. That's ands. So if, if you say, you know, X and Y, the overall thing is only considered true if both X and Y are true. Okay. iOS alternative is Android, the Google phone operating system. And uh, if one decorates something, one adorns it. Barber's razor sharpener is a strop, you know, sort of leather uh, bit that helps hone the blade. And then fist bump is a dap. There we go. So, oh, and I could have inferred that a anyway, because of our, our long John's doubled situation here. So John Adams, 
Yes, only U.S. president elected under the Federalist Party. Okay, I might not have known that if you asked me that way, but it's not surprising to me that it's John Adams once we have these crosses here. So there we go. Uh, Baloney is... Baloney, fooey. Mm, I can't think. (laughs) Busy places at Christmas, malls, certainly. Uh, food fight sound effect, effect splat, I suppose. Food might make a splat sound when thrown, or rather when hitting something. Old saying is a saw, an old saw, weathered old bromide. An old adage. Okay, an old saying. Talk too shrilly would be to yap at somebody. And baloney, my, oh, my eye, maybe. my You could say my foot or my eye, or that doesn't sound right. Um, in this case, with three letters, probably I. A dry run is a test. There we go. The clan of the cave bear heroine. Oh, I know this. Is, these are very popular. I don't know ch- either children's or young adults' book. I never read them. Uh, is it Lila? Maybe. I don't know. Broncos quarterback who? Oh, is this John as well? Yeah, it must be. So we're going to double these. Uh, it's funny. I just saw initially I did <laughs> because this sort of looked like a normal part of a word, not with you know. It didn't involve double things because L's are so frequently doubled, but no, of course these are doubled. So L, John Elway, I've at least heard of. There we go. Broncos must be must have been a Broncos quarterback who won back to back Super Bowls. I think that's probably right based on the crosses. So here we have to make a fast stop. To make a fast, st- oh, to eat, to stop a fast, to stop fasting. Oh, that's good. So this is Isla, which was not one of the things that I considered, but there we go. It's a name, so it sounds reasonable. Nincompoop. Oh, I spelled yap out incorrectly. There we go. Once again, making lots of typos recently. Uh, a nincompoop is a, a twit. I was going to say something else that is less appropriate. Um, how about that? I, I'd say? Not sure. I don't think that's right. Uh, oh, we have two things here. So 63 down says C50 across. 50 across says with 63 down, boxer who retired undefeated in 2007. Right, okay. Well, this will be Ali. And I think this is Layla Ali, a member of the Ali sort of boxing dynasty, um, who I have encountered in Crosswords a number of times. And I'm sure I've heard her name in general, but, but there we go. Sports organization in which five members have bird names. Right, the... Oh, sports organization. And, oh, and if, right. Okay, sorry. I was thinking of, I don't know, basketball players like Larry Bird. And then I was thinking, but how would you know exactly five? Um, and then, no, it isn't. That's not what we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for team names. And then the organization in which of which those are members are, in this case, presumably the NFL, the National Football League. Okay, football penalty markers flags. There we go. And how rude. Surely this is flags. How rude. Oh, is Layla with an E? I don't think so. I think, oh, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave that for now. Court failure. Maybe this is wrong. Maybe this is wrong. NHL, National Hockey League. Ah, turns out I don't actually know what's going on here. Let's look at this. Siberian sled dog. This this has to be Layla. Is it not? Is Maybe there's another member of that family. Okay, I guess I'll just leave it. I was so confident that'd be right. How about that? I'll be. There we go. That's what it is. Like many bathroom floors are tiled. That's also good. Court failure. So it could be a tennis court, maybe, if it's misdirecting me, as opposed to a court of law. Oh, something ball. Yeah, it could be a, could be any number of different sports, I suppose. Dog bro. There we go. Siberian sled dog. Ending with D is strange. Like many bathroom floors. Tile. No, it's got to be right. Hallelujah. Glory be. There we go. This must be flags. So that would make this NFL. Okay. What am I? What am I missing? Court failure, something ball, Siberian sled dog. I have no idea what this is. Huh, okay. I'm, this looks like Layla again. 
uh, right at the end. I'm really bottling it here, aren't I? Court failure. Arm ball? Oh, oh, is that right? That would make sense. In tennis, I don't actually know that I know this phrase, but is, is that if the ball hits your arm, that must be, that must be, a, you know, a foul or you lose the point or whatever. No, but that doesn't look right. Laura, no. What am I missing here? Aim ball? Sorry about this. This is, I feel absurd that I, I'm so close to the end. I have so many crosses and I can't close this out. How rude. How rude. Oh, does it matter that it has, it surely does matter that it has asterisks. I didn't really take that into account. What do I think that's meaning? Do I think it's, is it a gesture? It's very uncommon actually to see asterisks surrounding this. I mean, sometimes you see brackets surrounding that and that refers to a sound. So maybe that means it isn't a sound. Maybe it's not a sound, but it is a gesture because if it were a sound, it would have brackets. So put Layla back in here. Event with a royal, oh, I didn't look at this. Event with a royal court. I don't know. I've, this is absurd that I can't figure this out. This looks like Savoid. I don't know why that would be anything. How rude. Oh, slap, like a slapping gesture. You, you, that's your response to someone who said something rude. So what is event with a royal court? Pool? Prom. Prom has a prom king and a prom queen. That, that'll be the royal court. Air ball, air ball. There we go. Samoid? That's it. Okay. Well, that was a uh, that was a complete catastrophe of an ending. Sorry about that. Um, just really stumbling over myself. That was completely preposterous. NFL flags and Layla were all correct. <laughs> I think I deleted them two times each, possibly or more in some cases. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, this, I mean, I think now that I see it some way, I'm sure I've seen this before. It definitely wasn't part of my active vocabulary and. The idea of a of a dog breed ending in ed just for some reason was short circuiting something in my in my mind. Um, so I don't know, just a bit of a mess at the end. I'm sorry about that. Uh, anyway, that was it. That was the Wednesday crossword, um, and uh, a very a, a fun, simple theme. I mean, it's one of those themes that is simple when you know what it is, and of course, when you're putting things in the grid, it can seem very odd. I I wonder how many other people started it the same way I did. I said, oh, this this mega N is sort of some clever misdirection here because it might look like the whole thing ends up being ends. But then it occurred to me, right, but that's only because I happened to only get it from he here. I mean, that is just because I ended up putting these bits in the grid first. So there's really no reason other people would encounter this quadruple N as their first uh, sort of exposure to the theme. Um, so yeah, I'm curious how other people managed with this theme and how quickly you caught onto it. And if anyone jumped straight to this Long John's revealer by after having seen one or two of the other uh, theme entries. Uh, but anyway, there we go. So we had John Glenn, John Lewis, John Adams, and John Elway. And we entered them in a long manner to make Long John's, which is appropriate. Certainly, well, at least to the weather here in the UK where I am, it has been frigid and stormy recently. Actually, it has slightly warmed up today, which is greatly appreciated. But um, anyway, there we have it, Long Johns. Maybe I should invest in those. And that was the puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. That was the Wednesday crossword. I'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle. Uh, this kind of felt like a Thursday theme, to be honest. Um, but uh, we'll find out what's in store for us tomorrow with a bit of uh, some kind of interesting, intricate, or punny theme. Do join me then and find out. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. <laughs>